Jenny had never had a boyfriend. She didn't know what to expect. She was in such a hurry, John kept reminding her to slow down. She had a good one just sitting in his lap kissing. Then she realized why John had wanted them to take a shower. She did not know lovers did that. When her adrenals spasmed, it did not prepare her for when her heart also spasmed. When the two joined, she felt her throat, then the top of her head explode. She passed out. An hour later, Jenny had her head on John's chest. Will it always be like that? You were a virgin? John asked. Yes, Jenny squeaked out. We're like two teenagers. It has been 24 years since I was with anybody. John giggled. I'll always try to make it good for you, but it may be different each time. John, why did my stomach spasm? Then I thought I was having a heart attack. Then my throat and the top of my head exploded. Jenny asked, I saw stars. You touched upon the Kundalini effect. John smiled. First time together, and I think we hit it out of the park. That's amazing. Can we do that every day? Jenny asked with a big smile. I would love to. John giggled. After they had gotten dressed, John unlocked the door. Before he opened the door, he looked at Jenny with a big smile. He was surprised he did not hurt. He had done some major healings, but no downtime for himself since those healings of others. Maybe he had healed himself enough where he was able to pass the pain into Mother Earth rather than collecting it in his body. He would talk with the other healers regarding this. He wished his mentor Jan were still alive. She had been his cousin, John the Baptist, when he was the beloved of Jesus. Her life had been cut short. John sent a thought of love and gratitude to her. John opened the door to some shouting and excitement coming from the kitchen and dining room area. John and Jenny held hands as they moved in that direction. When Sam and Mary saw them, they stood and came toward John and Jenny. Our turn. Mary turned red as she giggled. What's going on? John asked. We are having a St. John's Got Talent show. Reverend Jacobs brought down a karaoke machine. We've got standing room only. Everyone is laughing their heads off, Sam reported. Thank you, God. We have a great team. Just because we're refugees don't mean we can't hold our heads up. Come, the love of my life, let me sing to you. John dragged Jenny up to where the microphone was. Who's the best so far? Many shouted out, Willa. A few others said, Nancy. John heard several other names. Is anybody waiting to sing? The stage is yours, John, Perry White said. What do you want to sing to John? Patty and Peter were running the playlist. If I Was a Carpenter by Tim Harden. Patty, is there a version for two? Jenny asked, then whispered to John. I've read the books. The song started. John made noise. No one called it singing. If I were a carpenter and you were a lady, would you marry me anyway? Would you have my baby? Jenny grabbed the mic. If you were a carpenter and I were a lady, I would marry you anyway. I'd have your babies. The judge paused the karaoke machine. Jenny, did I just hear John ask you to marry him and you accepted? John kneeled. Will you be my wife, Jennifer Roberts? John had in his right hand a beautiful ring with a very nice stone. Patty screamed. Jenny carefully picked the ring up and looked at it. She smiled and nodded her head as she carefully put it back into John's hand. She presented him with her left hand. He placed it on her ring finger. Thank you, John. I will treasure you in the ring for the rest of my life. Jenny was on her knees hugging him. I told Mom when I was seven years old I was going to marry Santa Claus someday. A day or two before John had asked the judge if there was anybody he should ask for Jenny's hand in marriage. The judge said, Damn straight, you can ask me. I want to marry Jenny. Do I have your approval? John asked. The judge looked around, seeing Peggy singing a song while working. She took damn good care of this dining room, working 12 to 16 hours a day, and happy to do it. She had a dozen volunteers that did the heavy lifting. The judge had heard about the $700,000 in silver John had given the church as a tithe. There were over a thousand men, women, and children enjoying life because of him. They felt the love here that flowed from John, safe, warm, and well-feed. The kids had told him that the day before the heat was turned on, 
water would freeze solid sitting in a plastic water bottle anywhere in the basement. A bit ago, several of the kids had come in from the outside, saying the latest batch of snow was over four feet, making the total over 12 feet. The Indians were making simple snowshoes that could be tied under one's boot. Because of John, they would all survive. The judge looked John in the eye. Yes, John, marry Jenny. Make a good life with her. Thank you, Judge, John said as he nodded his agreement. John, sit down. Let me sing to you. Jenny said, Patty Fine, The Power of Love by Celine Dion. Patty looked through the CDs, got it. She loaded it. When you're ready. Jenny took a big breath and nodded to Patty. The Power of Love by Celine Dion. The whispers in the morning of lovers sleeping tight are rolling by like thunder now as I look in your eyes. I hold on to your body and feel each move you make. Your voice is warm and tender, a love that I could not forsake, cause I'm your lady and you are my man. Whenever you reach for me, I'll do all that I can. Lost is how I'm feeling lying in your arms when the world outside's too much to take. That all ends when I'm with you. Jenny looked around and motioned for others to stand and sing. The music machine was plugged into the big screen TV. A hundred voices joined with Jenny's. Even though there may be times, it seems I'm far away. Never wonder where I am, cause I am always by your side. Cause I'm your lady and you are my man. Whenever you reach for me, I'll do all that I can. We're heading for something somewhere I've never been. Sometimes I'm frightened, but I'm ready to learn of the power of love. The sound of your heart beating made it clear suddenly the feeling that I can't go on is light years away, cause I'm your lady and you are my man. Whenever you reach for me, I'll do all that I can. We're heading for something, somewhere I've never been. Sometimes I am frightened, but I'm ready to learn of the power of love. The power of love, the power of love. Sometimes I am frightened, but I'm ready to learn of the power of love. The power of love, ooh, ooh, as I look into your eyes. The power of love, the power of love. When Jenny looked at John and belted out, cause I'm your lady and you are my man, it hit John hard and he had a river of tears fall from his eyes, even though, though his face had a giant smile. The healing he felt would change his life. This was his John the Baptist moment. He had never felt so much love in his life. Jenny saw the tears, but she wanted to put her stamp on this man. She had been waiting for her entire life of 34 years for him to show up. Her heart was every bit as big as his. She ended the song sitting in John's lap with everybody raising the roof with their applause. I didn't mean to make you cry. Emotions are the language of the soul. My chakras are all wide open. It feels safe for me to be that vulnerable. I have never felt that much love in my life. God willing, I would like to change this world. Your love gives me the strength to do that. John and Jenny kissed deeply. I just read yesterday about the scene in chapter 20 in book three, Gaia about the Kundalini. Are we going to have to go through that? Jenny asked. You already have my love. John shared with a smile. Jenny opened her mouth, but no sound was made. She closed her mouth and smiled. The two kissed again. The Saturday after Thanksgiving, November 28th, 2020. How do you want your steak, John? Ivan asked. Medium rare. John smiled. Ivan had three pans filled with steaks. He reached into the rightmost pan of the three and pulled out a nice chunk of sirloin, placing it on a plate with scrambled eggs and hash browns. You're going to give us five stars as far as shelters go. Ivan, we'll lose a star or two tomorrow when we serve oatmeal and fruit. Ivan laughed. The kitchen crew is having a morning off. What did John have? Jenny asked. Steak medium rare, Ivan said. The same for me, Jenny said. At the end of the line was toast, coffee, silverware, and napkins. John was standing looking at the 10-foot serving line made from four 2X4S. The carpenter had been busy. Curtis and Frank were helping Ivan. They had decided they wanted to become cooks. So when the spaceships showed up, they could be the cooks on the spaceships. Medium rare steak, scrambled eggs, and hash browns, Jenny said. What's that, honey? John asked. The rumor is you have a certain breakfast every week, that this has been going on since the OSO slide on March 22, 2014. Yes, the slide misses me and my neighbors by less than 100 feet, 
The slide dammed up the Stillaguamish River and filled my home with seven feet of water. I had to move where I ended up was near a buzz-in steakhouse. I love steak and eggs once a week for breakfast. John laughed. It breaks up the monotony. John laughed harder. I see that. Jenny said as she cut off a piece of steak. Ivan does a wonderful job. This is good. The Sunday after Thanksgiving, November 29th, 2020, John led Jenny and the kids up to the parish hall. They sat near the front. John was asked to answer some more questions for the congregation. How do you heal? I don't. I allow God and the soul before me to heal the body. My job is to bring in enough energy for that to happen. My right brain wants to merge with the patient, and that is where I experience the pains. John smiled. I am sure you are more than a bit confused. For many years, I would ask Jesus to place his hands over my hands and guide me. I still do when the feeling directs me. Can you show us how? John led everyone in the Lord's Prayer. Now rub your hands together and bless them. Raise your left hand and point your right hand at your left hand. Three minutes went by. Now raise your right hand and point to your left. After another three minutes, answers. Let's play Jeopardy. Who felt a feather-like disturbance in the left hand? About 90% of the parish raised their hands. Who felt a feather-like disturbance in the right hand? About 10% raised their hands. Who felt it in both hands? John counted three hands. Now ask Jesus or Buddha or who you believe is the best to place their hands over your hands. Much talking was generated. Pair up. Find out if anything is hurting your new partner. Ask God for guidance. After five minutes, switch places and let your new friend work on you. The kids in front were also trading healings. When Curtis was being worked on, John heard a snap as he watched the reaction of the two boys. It was obvious to both John and Deacon Jensen that a vertebra was now much happier. While Deacon Jensen was working on John, he also felt a snap in the neck area. Oh, that feels better, John said. To the parish, later on today, keep practicing, use the healing table. Fix that knee or hip that is starting to bother you. Do the same for your neighbor. After the service, John and Jenny were enjoying a cup of coffee. John, the survey is done. Patty handed John several pages of an Excel data sheet. John, Jenny, and the kids had just come from the Sunday service upstairs. Standing room only even with the 200 chairs from downstairs. Wow, 1,023 individuals, 573 females, and 450 males. 68 were under the age of 17. John handed the survey to Ivan and Wilbur for them to look at. The boys and young men were out digging out the sidewalks again. They had started at the door and dug a trench to the sidewalk along California Way. They would come in every two hours and warmed up, although the work was keeping them plenty warm. The kitchen had hot apple cider for them and leftover pie. At two o'clock, a helicopter landed in the parking lot. In came three Army Rangers from Fort Lewis looking for Father John. They were escorted from the parish hall by Reverend Jacobs and Nancy. What can I do for you, gentlemen? John asked when the five faced him. You're to come with us, sir. The man had Captain Bars on his collar. I am Captain Swanson. Can you give me a reason why Captain Swanson? John asked. He remembered that name from somewhere. On the TV was the announcement that a state of emergency had been called for Western Washington. There was more snow in the forecast. I need to get you to Fort Lewis. It is a matter of life or death. Because we are under a state of emergency, I can do that, Captain said. Captain, I have saved someone almost every day we have been down here. John reported then asked, Are you related to Martha and Cecil Swanson? My grandparents. They live nearby somewhere. I'm fearful for them. They're getting pretty old. Have you seen them? John looked around then looked at four of the boys and nodded. They ran off in different directions calling for Kukio, Mr. and Mrs. Swanson. Sir, it's our CO. He had his foot fall off this morning. He has what looks like gangrene starting. When will I be back? If I have my way tomorrow, sir, but I can't guarantee that. Martha was pulling Cecil by the hand. Bobby, is that you, boy? One of the rangers giggled. Captain Swanson gave him a stern look. John knew what Bobby Swanson was dealing with. He turned his head towards Jenny and squeezed his eyes tight, hoping not to laugh. 
Captain Swanson picked up his grandmother and swung her around to her delight. Grandpa Cecil just stood there and laughed. Put me down, son, Martha demanded, laughing so hard tears were coming to her eyes. I'm so very glad you are alive, Grandma. You too, Grandpa, Captain Swanson said as he hugged his grandfather. St. John did it. He walked with Jesus. He saved someone or brought them back to life almost every day. Cecil said, he saved us on the university bridge too. I need to take him, the captain warned. Make sure you bring him back. We got more snow coming. Cecil said, it will take his miracles to let all of us walk away. I'll do everything I can, Grandpa. John and Jenny both stood to put on their heavy coats. My orders are only to bring you, Reverend Taylor. Captain, if you want me to pull a miracle out of my hat, then allow me some latitude, John demanded. The captain looked at his grandparents that he had given up all hope of ever seeing alive again. He looked at John. We have room for two. John motioned Billy over. Have the disciples, Carol, Tina, Peter, Patty, and anyone else in the star chamber in an hour. Come find me and Jenny. We need your energy for what we're going to do. John laughed when Billy looked at his bare wrist. Ask the judge what time it is. If he wants, have him join all of you. Sam and Mary, too. You'll be back, Papa John? Billy asked. Yes, run the place. Keep yourself and everybody alive, well-fed and warm, John said. Billy came to attention and made a smart salute. Yes, sir. John stood straight and saluted back. He took Jenny's hand, and the two followed the captain towards the steps and door to the white wonderland outside. Before they stepped out into the snow, much heavier overcoats were given to them. The parking lot was only four feet deep with new snow. A trail had been dug to the chopper. Once they got there and climbed in, the chopper revved up and took off. John was quiet as he talked to God. Jenny looked around the whirlybird. She had never been in anything like this. She wasn't scared, she thought. I'm with John. Why would I be? She smiled and her gloved hand squeezed John's gloved hand. The trip was only a half hour to cover the 34 miles. The landing pad only had 20 to 24 inches of fresh snow and ice on it. They left the heavy coats with the helicopter and headed for a building. Once inside the building, things were a little bit more normal. The lights were on and the temperature was into the 60s. The captain quickly led them down the hall into a room. There before them was a man on his back in obvious pain. What's his name? John asked. General Douglas Franks, the captain said. Another name from the ATI Op series. Captain, I need whatever you have for a core horseman or doctor here as soon as possible. I want you and five of your men standing around this bed when we fix this. Ask for volunteers if you can. The captain thought for a few seconds, then nodded and moved to fill John's request. John turned to the patient. General Franks, I ask permission to put you back together. You have it, Father John? A very weak reply came back. What's your pain level, sir? John asked. Ever have a horse step on your foot? General Franks asked. No. John looked at Jenny. She shook her head. No, also. Well, I have. That felt like a bee sting compared to this. Yeah, top of the chart, John said. I get it. Sir, I'm Warren Officer Anderson. How can I help? A young man stood before John and Jenny. The captain sent me. I'm John and this is Jenny. Do you have someone here you would trust with your life? Skit, I would trust Skit. She's a four-year medical student that had an oops going through medical school and got kicked out. That's what happened to me. Please get her. John requested, Warren officer, please come back also. Yes, sir. Anderson looked at the general and quickly moved away. An hour from leaving West Seattle. The table with General Franks on it had officers and enlisted all around. This time, Jenny was at the general's head. Lieutenant Skitt, or a better name was Lieutenant Virginia Casey, was at John's left, and Warren Officer Maxwell, Maxie, Anderson, was to John's right. John was sitting on a three-foot stool with the left foot of the general in front of him. John looked at every man and woman in the eyes. Would you follow this man into battle? Answer, please. It started slowly with a weak yes. Then it picked up power and volume. Yes, John asked again only very much louder. Would you follow this man into battle? 
the answer was at the level he wanted. Yes. Okay. Open up your heart to the general, John said. How does one do that? One of the volunteers asked. John stood and touched his hands together over his chest. He slowly opened his hands like a kitchen cabinet opening its doors. The energy jumped when John did that. All the men and women copied him. The energy level was incredible. Please follow my lead, as he said the Lord's Prayer. Carefully cut the shoe from the foot, he directed Virginia Casey, another name from the Atiop, a thousand years of peace series. John could just barely see Jenny through the silvery white of the energy. Their eyes caught and both smiled. John, what is that on the ceiling? General Franks asked. John looked up, then bent his neck. General, those are my disciples, sir. They will make this possible. John laughed. Hi, kids. Please send our general here all the love you can. His foot broke off at the joint. His tendons and skin were frozen and tore like paper. One of the men around the table started to look to be out on his feet. Sit down before you fall. John told him, let's continue. Four hours went by. The foot was on and all the skin reconnected. The blood vessels reconnected along with all the tendons. General, how are you feeling? Are you still with us? You do good work, John, the general commented as he wiggled toes. I'm thirsty as all get out. One of the officers offered the general a bottle of water. John nodded his approval. Can you feel this? Virginia asked as she lightly ran her finger along the bottom of his foot. The general started to giggle. Yes, please don't do that. Virginia and Maxie traded looks. I owe you a Benji. Maxie whispered, We're only half done. We need to protect that foot for a while, like a week or two. John said, We have a boot that will work. It's designed to take the place of a cast for a week or two. W.O. Maxie Anderson said, Go get it, please. Father John, I was supposed to be discharged yesterday, but with the weather, I'll stay another two weeks and make sure that foot heals 100%. Virginia Casey promised. Where's home? John asked. I don't know, Virginia said very sadly. John reached into his pocket and brought out a 90% silver quarter. That one's silver. I think I know where your home is. You come to visit us when you are done here. I've been writing about you for five years. Ask the general to read his books regarding a thousand years of peace. Virginia, you are part of the team that helps me and John end death in the world. Jenny smiled. Read John's books. Parts of them are starting to become true.